in quiz number eight, number four, you have this natural deduction problem and you're asked what step can come next. I'm not going to look at the options. I'm just going to go through it and show you why, you know, why the answer has to be what it is. So we have the first premise in the in the proof is if f then g, and then we have tilde g, and then you've already, and then what we're trying to get, this is the conclusion, is tilde f wedge h. The first step of the proof is already done for you, where you have tilde f, and that's derived from premise one, premise two, using the rule modus tollens. I'm not going to go through that. Instead, we're asking, well, what, what, what comes next? And you're given various options. Notice we have this first part, tilde f in line three. Sorry, the various options are these rules. CD, constructive dilemma, conjunction, and addition. That's why these are over here. I'll talk about those in one second. But first note, our conclusion is this. That's what we're trying to get to. For natural deductions, they're always going to be valid. I mean, it'd be a really mean thing to give you an invalid argument because you could never do the proof, at least not do it correctly. So they're always going to be valid. The point of the natural deduction is to show that a valid argument is, in fact, valid and to do so in tiny steps that anybody can understand so long as they know the notation. What you're effectively doing is learning the notation, understanding how to substitute in to the rules that we're establishing. So that's what this quiz question is designed to get you to see, is to think through this notion of substitution instance and really get clear about it with regard to one rule. So we have tilde f, already, and we're trying to get to tilde f wedge h. Well, especially when you're first learning these, really all you're doing is trying to find substitution instances of the rules in the body of the proof that, that we have. So here, I mean, if we go back to modus tollens, what we're doing is saying, oh, look, this is an example of modus tollens, p, q, tilde q, therefore tilde p. If you look at modus tollens, it's exactly how it goes. So now we're asking, well, what other substitutions, substitution instances are in here? Well, look at how addition works. It feels like cheating, but it's not. And I'll explain why. Look, addition says P, therefore P wedge Q. This literally means whatever you have on a line all by itself. Here I have tilde F all by itself on a line. You can then put on a new line, wedge, whatever the heck you want. Well, that's very convenient because look, I have tilde F, that's line three. I want tilde F wedge H. So I can literally just write out what I wanted there using addition. Now it only works if there's a wedge. Why? Because go to your truth tables uh, for disjunction, for wedge. What does it say? Well, our definition of wedge is that, look, if you know that one element is true, you know that the whole thing is true. And so it's perfectly valid to conclude from tilde F that tilde F wedge H. Why am I allowed to do that? Because we know this rule works. Why? Because we can do a truth table for it that shows that if I start with all true premises, this conclusion must be true. Why? Well, because P is true. If P is true, then P wedge Q is true. So look, the answer for quiz eight number four is tilde uh, F wedge H uh, by three addition. None of the other answers work. There's one where um, this is a dot instead, but notice addition is only with a wedge. You can't conclude tilde f dot h. Why? Because that would give you h. This doesn't give you h. This gives you tilde f wedge h. Conjunction is one possibility, but look at what conjunction does. It puts these two things that are on separate lines together on one line with a dot separating them. Remember, dot means and. And then constructive dilemma is certainly not it. You need two conditionals plus 
both of the antecedents of the conditionals divided by a wedge to conclude the two consequents divided by a wedge. Certainly don't have that here uh, uh, as a substitution instance. So there's only one possibility. There's only one thing you can really do uh, for step four, and that is what I've done here in step four, which is put down tilde f wedge h by three, uh, the rule of addition.